DC current through induction. And what it does is it creates a high frequency DC pulse. Uh, if you'll notice from those coils there, now he's got two on one circuit, you see. Right. Now that's... You, you can point with the... Uh, yeah, you've, you've got two coils on one circuit. You've got this coil here and this coil over here. And uh, then you, you look at these coils and you look here. Let's see. There it says P1. See? Interesting. And reference. over here it says P2. Uh -huh. You know? So basically those are primaries, different primaries. And this, for instance, could be used. The only reason for having them in the same circuit is, is for a flying saucer. In other words, this coil... It doesn't coil, make sense the way it's uh, set up. I mean, by, if, if you are yeah. uh, signaling, as, as the, uh, the patent claims, system of signaling, <coughs> you wouldn't have a wire that's connected for 300 miles uh, to signal. Uh, that it defeats the whole purpose. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's all on the same oscillator. He's running these things on one oscillator. Now, this one over here is the one we should be looking at if we all can right. get it in the picture. Sure. All right, that's uh, more interesting because there you see the P1 and P2 right there, okay? Now, that's P2. It's expressed a little differently, but they didn't have these terms. Now, this is the 1890s. P2 that, yeah, that you described uh, in, in relation to the, the pile Toktor compass. Yeah, and here you've got a rotary spark gap yes. powering two different oscillators. And notice that this capacitor has fewer plates than this one. And yep. that's because this one is going to be tuned to a quarter wavelength. This one's going to be turned tuned to a half or a full wavelength. This one will produce a DC pulse, the brush discharge, what I call a pseudo-electrostatic discharge. This one produces an alternating high-frequency current. This is used on the bottom or the back of the ship to, to uh, destroy the inertia. This is used to create the momentum in the direction of travel. So you basically can accelerate the ship and turn it at 90 degrees with this system by controlling the discharges and, and a polarity on the sh uh, surface of the ship. Now, uh, this uh, particular coil uh, is, uh, if you notice, the, the primary is around the outside, and so the voltage increases towards the center. The primary is also connected to the secondary so that at the same time the current enters the primary and travels around this direction, the current is entering the secondary and from the same source and traveling around this direction. That's an interesting And it's idea. like it's really kicking out that, that pulse, you see. Yeah, that's and totally different than how we're taught uh, to build our Tesla coils these days for yeah. our little hobby kits. Yeah. Uh, well, see, Tesla uh, said that purpose. the DC electrostatic charge uh, allows the ether carriers to enter easily into the ship, whereas in the high frequency, it tends to collect the, the positive ions around the opposite end of the ship, and the positive ions basically stop the flow of the ether. So you don't have any, any uh, resistance to movement because there's no inertia being imparted uh, you have an imbalance of forces. You have inertia in one direction and a blockage of the ether carriers on the other, so they can do nothing but enter the ship and dissolve and impart momentum. Now, to, to make this possible, the Earth is emitting uh, rapidly varying electric static forces of tremendous potential, uh, and that rigidifies the ether in Earth's vicinity which is why the Michelson-Morley experiment was false, is because the ether is stationary close to the Earth, but as you get further away from the Earth, the ether is more in motion. So if you tried to detect an ether drift close to the Earth, you wouldn't detect one. It's rigidified by the electrostatic forces and moves with the Earth, whereas outside the Earth's field, it's, it's in relative motion. So the ether drift experiment was based on a false premise of a dynamic ether. So uh, somehow uh, Tesla, or Von Braun, I'm sorry, uh, Werner Von Braun got a hold of this uh, technology and this is what he was developing in 1935? See, Billy Lay was an expert on microwaves. He was the greatest 
expert on the microwaves maybe in the world in 1935. And why would they need a microwave expert? Yeah, why would they need a microwave expert? Now, what's interesting about Billy Lay is the government hired him in 1944. The Burke Aircraft Corporation moved to the uh, environs of College Park, Maryland. And that, I believe, was the first American electropropulsive flying saucer project. That was after they discovered the Germans making these ships based on Tesla technology. In Maryland? In Maryland, it's right, College Park, Maryland, that's where the Goddard Institute is. How about that? How you know, cozy? And the Space Flight Center. <laughs> So that's a very high priority to some guy who writes science articles and poetry books for children about science, you know, that was suddenly whisked away by the government after they realized that he was the only guy they knew who could tell them anything about this stuff. And uh, so they hired him and put him to work right outside in Washington, D.C. on some very high priority project. So Burke Aircraft keep an eye Corporation on of Georgia. Yeah. Uh, um, that's. That's interesting. I'd like to uh, uh, take a really strange jump here and talk about flying submarines. Uh, <laughs> you, you, uh, you included in your, your book an interesting chapter on flying submarines, question mark. You claimed that possibly the Germans had developed uh, or used uh, uh, submarine tubes to create flying machines. Yes. Well, it would be perfect. I mean, weight is no object because the electromagnetic interaction is 10 to the 40th power times stronger than the gravitational interaction. So that means that a very tiny amount of electrical energy can pick up a huge object. And uh, uh, what triggered my awareness of this submarine pressure hull concept was a person I know and his daughter witnessed one of these ships. Uh, this man went to Albuquerque to pick up his daughter at an airport, at the Albuquerque airport. And when they began to drive back, this ship was hovering over their car all the way back to Santa Fe. He even followed them to their house. And he said that it, uh, it had an old iron, what looked like an old iron ship's hull. With, he could see rivets on it and it hummed like a diesel engine. Apparently these doesn't, don't sound like alien spacecrafts from an advanced civilization. Well, the ones in South America have been seen belching black smoke and making clanking noises. Probably some <laughs> loose chain or something hitting the hull as they moved around, you see. I mean, but that would be perfect because the, the submarine pressure hull would be perfect for doing a prototype for Von Braun's planned Mars mission because uh, it contained a generator, uh, all sorts of equipment you would need in a hermetically sealed environment. And the pressure hull is round, just like a cigar, and has slightly tapered ends on each end. And then around that, they built all of the uh, you know, ballast tanks and other things, and the conning tower and everything. But the basic tube is just a round tube like that thing right there. Yeah, and this is a picture we have of was called here early 50s cigar craft seen by Joe Fieri near Woonsocket, Rhode Island. And it's very similar to what you're describing. Well, I have seen videos of a ship and exact same description has been seen a number of times. Uh, one time off of uh, South Africa, another time in Virginia, uh, several, uh, quite a few times in Colorado, and I have a video of the thing up in Idaho, and you can see it's silver. It's like stainless steel, and uh, you can see halos around the ship, and as it's hovering, the halos are stationary. You can see the peaks and nodes, nodes of the high frequency, you see, and when the ship moves this way, the wave nodes move. If, if the ship moves this way, the, the waves, nodes move this way. And if, if it's moving this way, they move the other way. But these are, are quite visible. I mean, I've seen it on television many times, and I've seen, and now I have my own video that was taken by some associates uh, of this ship. And uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, I can see the, the halo and the wave forms on the hull. And uh, so it's, it's perfect. Uh, you know, 
verification of what I'm saying about the Tesla technology, 